Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2021 and a brand new experiment today where we're taking a look at what would happen if you terminated the contracts of every player in the top five leagues in Europe. We are talking about 6,648 players having their contracts terminated and becoming free agents. So they're all still in the game but none of them currently registered at any of the big clubs in Europe. It's going to be an absolute free-for-all. And this isn't just the first team players. If we look at Bilbao, uh, you can see uh, it looks like they've still got their players, but that's because of their B team. They've automatically promoted players up from the B team there uh, who are part of their, their squad, Bilbao B and Bilbao C, uh, promoting their players up. So Spain a little bit different to uh, some of the other countries. But if we have a look at Atletico Madrid, and their players, uh, you can see none of the major players are in there. A couple of players worth a million pounds. Uh, but they will soon be bringing new people in. Barcelona as well. Uh, no Lionel Messi. He has finally got his way and got out of his contract. Uh, Oriol Busquets, I imagine the uh, younger brother of Sergio Busquets there. Uh, one of the biggest players at the team now. Uh, same for Real Madrid. They don't have Eden Hazard anymore. They're all gone. And top player worth 800k uh, for... Uh, Real Madrid and if we have a look at the Premier League this really is uh, completely empty because there's no B teams for the Premier League teams all of their uh, youth squads have been terminated as well so the Premier League is genuinely uh, completely empty they still got their managers and everybody else but just flick through these teams here um, Hakim Ziyech has survived somehow I have no idea how he survived I'll tell you what what I'll do is just go in and terminate his contract so there we go just clean him up uh, and then Crystal Palace, they're all all gone. Um, this is just to verify that there aren't any mistakes in there. Uh, Bundesliga, also empty now if we start with Köln. Um, again, players promoted out of their, their secondary teams. I didn't go through all of them. So, for instance, Union Berlin do, new, do not have a secondary team. And therefore, uh, they have no players. Same for Bayer Leverkusen. But some of them do have that benefit of a B team in the lower leagues. Um, and Alexander Nubel actually has managed to stick around. So we'll also terminate that contract. He's worth 18 million. Um, but generally the team's being completely gutted out. I imagine that most of the players that survived were players who'd been dropped down uh, due to injury into the B teams in, in some of these countries. But in uh, Italy as well, if we look at Lazio, Nobody left in there. Uh, a few players who were out on loan, uh, registered with the B teams, still around. Uh, Tonali is still at AC Milan, uh, which is an interesting one. Uh, the loan players managing to survive in Italy. And then in France, if we have a look at the uh, Paris roster, uh, you will see Danilo Pereira currently out on loan uh, at Porto or on loan from Porto that's why he's still there he's on loan from Porto and obviously the contracts in Portugal were not terminated so Marquinhos uh, has been released even though he's listed here as club captain so we're going to get to see all of these big teams go out and fight for the best players in the world uh, if we look at the shortlist of players here uh, you can see that quite a few of them worth a good amount of value actually uh, but they're registered at teams uh, whereas the likes of Messi uh, will currently have a valuation of zero uh, because he's a free agent uh, so you can pick Lionel Messi up on a free now if you want to use this database yourself it is available on Steam uh, just search for Gencaldo on Steam and you'll be able to to find this and use it yourself in your game so if you want to try this uh, with a team of your choice bring Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar and Mbappe all together at the same club then you can so again, just look for Jen Caldo out on Steam and let me know how you get on down in the comments as well. Um, and what we'll do today is we'll go forward three months uh, to see the end of the first transfer window. We'll stop after January transfer window as well, uh, just to check in on where they're at. And then in the next episode, we'll go a little bit further ahead because there's going to be a lot of players to look through. We're going to have a lot of teams to check through. This one will take a little bit of time. Uh, but please do make sure you subscribe to the channel for more experiments like this as well. And drop a like down there below if you'd like another part of this. And let me know in the comments if there are things you want to see in the next episode that I haven't shown you today. But let's jump forward three months now and have a look at where the best players in the world have ended up. Well, we have gone those three months ahead. And as you can see, the table actually looks pretty similar to what you would expect whether we'd done this or not. But the players registered at different clubs do now look 
very different. And if we start at the top of the league, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has brought in quite a few big names back to uh, Manchester United. You can see Ruben Diaz picked up uh, from Manchester City and brought to United. Iman Perisic in there, Lucas Diaz, Marino Ilicic, uh, a really big name to bring in as well. But it's not the, the biggest bit of business uh, you've ever seen in your life. And if we drop down uh, Newcastle, uh, not really bringing in anybody other than Mason Greenwood on a free is a major signing. That's a good bit of business for Newcastle. Manchester City, though, have gone absolutely crazy, as you would expect. Joe Gomez, Mendy, Odegaard, uh, Teo Hernandez, Camavinga coming in as well. Mason Mount, Awa, Tamori. Um, so quite a f few good young players brought into the team by Man City. Uh, and if we go up to Liverpool as well, uh, Ruben Neves, Ayorza Bal, Sula, uh, Fernando, they've really not done a lot of business, Liverpool. So it's going to be interesting to see if they are able to really challenge for the title again. Um, Leicester, have they brought in any big name players? Not really. Uh, Leeds United have got Jamal LaSalle and Carl Darlow trying to be the next Newcastle. Um, Fulham bringing in nobody, uh, which is bold. Um, Everton as well, not really bringing any major players there. So a bit of a worry for them. Declan Rice joining Crystal Palace. Saka joining Palace as well. Uh, and you can see that Hakim Ziyech just rejoined Chelsea. Uh, again, um, this game does strange things sometimes. William Carvalho, Sayunchu, a reasonably balanced team actually from Chelsea that they've gone and, and brought into the club. Um, just quickly flicking through these so if your favourite team pops up you can pause the screen and have a look uh, but also to try and check if any major unusual transfers have happened but it looks like the Premier League have done a pretty poor job of bringing people in at this point um, West Ham seem to have done decent business there bringing in a good few wonder kids Danny Welbeck's at West Brom now big signing uh, Spurs bringing in Phil Foden is a big shout um, Southampton not doing a huge amount of business although Cliver very good signing um, Mark Nobles ended up in Sheffield um, and then Newcastle take us back to where we were with Mason Greenwood joining them that's a massive bit of business uh, for Newcastle he's not scored yet but he will eventually don't worry about it He'll, he will get a goal uh, now if we go and have a look at La Liga next of course Real Madrid are going to do very well out of this, I would imagine. Fernando Llorente, uh, one of their signings. Um, but it looks like Kevin De Bruyne has joined them. Uh, big free transfer there. They've also brought Cristiano Ronaldo back to Real Madrid. Uh, Keylor Navas has been brought back to Real Madrid. They're getting the band back together. But alongside Erling Haaland, Stefan de Vrij, uh, Angel Di Maria back there. Umtiti, Alfonso Davies. This is a scary team. Griezmann, Donnarumma, Kimmich. Uh, Ross Barkley's in there as well. Um, not necessarily always going to be starting, I would imagine. But Real Madrid have done some scary business there. Barcelona as well, I would imagine, have done something similar. They haven't. Wow. Barcelona have done nothing at all. Why is that? Why have they done that? Barcelona have signed absolutely nobody. That is a shock. They're still in fourth place, even though they brought nobody in. Atletico Madrid, um, they've done a lot of business here, but uh, none of the major, major, major names in here. Pickford um, joining Atletico Madrid. They do have a habit of signing English players. Valencia, uh, if we look at their history, um, they've brought in a good few players here. Fosu Mensa, uh, Debushi, Vallejo. Who else have they got down here? David De Gea is a big, big signing as well for them. 29 years old. Bit of life left in David De Gea yet. Um, and then if we just quickly flick through some of the other clubs as well in their transfer history, uh, I don't think we're going to see too much because they don't have the biggest wage budgets. And as you can see, Real Madrid really making out like bandits, it has to be said. Uh, they have done all of the business, Real Madrid. Nobody else really bringing anybody of note in. Uh, but I think the the next place we're going to want to check is PSG, who've already stormed to the top of the table in France. And if we look at their history, they brought in a good number of players. Depay, Portu, uh, Jamie Vardy. It's actually not that great. This is not great reading. It's certainly nothing like the Real Madrid levels that we saw. Um, and so far, we've not seen the likes of Mbappe either, which is 
uh, interest. And if we have a look at maybe Monaco next in France, not a huge amount of business. I mean, I imagine PSG are going to run away with this. Saint Etienne have done a great job, bringing in loads of people, uh, a lot of French players coming in. Same at Bordeaux. I think the the teams that tend to do best out of this are the ones that stack up their squad with good players. Uh, not great players. They aren't going for the big, big names. But they do bring in uh, strong squads that are well balanced. And at the moment, Sean Longstaff joining Nantes. Um, but I think the other team that had done well here were... Uh, let's have a look. Who else were, were up there in the league? Ugh. Uber Eats League. So Rennes had done extremely well. Juan Bernat, Navas, Patricio. Those are some really shrewd signings. They've actually absolutely stacked their club with players as well. No wonder they're doing well. Uh, Lille also doing quite well at the moment. If we can just have a quick look here. Uh, Tello brought in. Again, this is a, a good, solid, middle-of-the-pack spending spree. Uh, if you can call it that. I guess wage bill is going to be a, a bit of an issue eventually. But in Syria, Juventus top of the table again and you can see why bringing in a lot of names but again no no major names there for Juventus oh Atlanta have done extremely well Donny van der Beek Rudiger João Felix Bellerin Ben Leno any other major names in there Hakimi and Havertz that's a great and Lautaro Martinez at Atlanta are going to be a team to watch um, Benevento have done extremely well as well bringing in really good players not so much for some of the other teams. Uh, you can see Kepa has joined Cagliari. There are some strange transfers in here. Players joining the teams you wouldn't expect, but I think that might have something to do with the wages that are being demanded by some of these players. Uh, Milan doing terribly. Lazio doing terribly. And, of course, a lot of players will be signed through the season as well. It's not like they'll all be done first. Some clubs are going to go in harder at the start of the season and bring in a lot of names, and others will take their time, try and make sure they get the right kind of players through the season but that might leave them left behind uh, in doing that as well so that's the uh, Italian league and if we going to have a look at the Bundesliga up next starting with Bayern Munich who are top of the table already they've done a lot of business uh, but not a lot of great business Newbells rejoined them Callum Hudson had joined Daniel James the two biggest signings for Bayern Munich um, now obviously the different wage structures um, in Germany, they're fan-owned clubs a lot of the time, and that might have an impact. But you see Leipzig, and one of the more commercial teams, have done a lot of business, bringing players in, some decent players as well. Uh, Schalke have brought a lot of players in on freeze. For de Bremen. But uh, not a lot of variety in the Bundesliga. Borussia Dortmund, they've brought in quite a lot of names, but again, not a lot that I recognise. So that means that we've seen some big, big players not show up uh, in the list here. You can see where the biggest players in the world are, and there's no surprise about where they've ended up. We've seen Ronaldo rejoin um, Real Madrid, but I think this means that when we have a look for Mbappe, he is currently still unemployed. I think that means that Messi is also still unemployed. So there are big, big players not playing football at the moment. That's going to be a really interesting one to keep an eye on. Um, but they're just not all yet been snapped up. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of signings still to be made. Uh, but you can stop the video at any point, press pause, and you can see where any of the big players that you're interested in have ended up for now. Some players will end up in the Chinese leagues as well, I'm sure, especially as free transfers. They can get the bigger wages out there. But there's a limit on the number of players that the Chinese clubs can actually uh, pick up. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. But what I'll do now is jump to the end of the season and then we'll try and check in on those big players and see who's won the leagues in the very first season of the New World Order. But we're at the end of the first season now and you can see uh, the big names at the top are still the same, but Real Madrid bringing in even more players. Sadio Mane has joined Real Madrid. Uh, Bernardo Silva, Atletico Madrid. Just looking for any major big names. Harry Kane's ended up at Olympic Marseille. Uh, Caballos is now one of the most valuable players in the world. 
A lot of names still not popping up on this list. Eden Hazard's ended up at PSG. That's maybe not a big surprise. De Ligt to Ajax. He's gone back to Ajax, De Ligt. Trent Alexander-Arnold at Bayern Munich. Rashford has ended up at Watford. Marcus Rashford at Watford. Um, not played for them yet. He's only recently signed. But that's quite a funny one. Uh, Frankie de Jong at PSG. Virgil van Dijk at Marseille. He must be making a good stab of it in Liga. Bringing in some decent players. Andrew Robertson switched to Manchester United. Usman Dembele at Leipzig. Um, you'll have to let me know in the comments if there's any funny signings in here that I've missed out on. Uh, but we're still missing some big, big names who have not joined clubs. Upa Meccano's at Arsenal. Um, and then Icardi has gone to the Chinese League. Wilfred Zaha at Lille. Mason Greenwood still at Newcastle, but he is unhappy. Jaden Sancho's gone to Porto. Bit of an odd one. I think they must just be taking the first off as they get at this point. Uh, Harry Maguire's at Newcastle, but has asked for something. Uh, he wants to leave. That's not a big surprise, uh, Harry. Um, but yeah, quite a, quite a few odd ones. Dean Henderson has gone to Sheffield United, which is nice. Callum Wilson, the goal machine, is now at Burnley, uh, where he is still scoring, even for Burnley. Uh, he is just broken in Football Manager this year. Uh, Danny Ings unhappy. Is everybody at Newcastle unhappy? I mean, they've just been relegated, uh, which says a lot. And yes, they are all unhappy at Newcastle because they're in a relegated team. Um, but we're still missing. So if we look for Mbappe, he is still unemployed. And if we look for Messi, he is retired. Lionel Messi has retired because nobody offered him a place. There he is. He retired at 33 because he never got another club. Uh, presumably because nobody could afford him. Uh, if we look for Neymar, where did he end up? He went to... Gramau. Wow. On a free transfer. You went back to Brazil. I didn't see that one coming. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see if these players stay at these clubs or if they move elsewhere. I mean, he's only on 34 grand a week. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I think we need to have a look at maybe some of the, the bigger leagues around Europe. So, uh, if we look at the previous season in Liga. It was actually won by Ren by three points over PSG. Ren taking the title, uh, now rich in their valuation. They are signing players, but they brought in some really good players. We spotted this at the start of the video, and they kept doing that throughout the season. Really solid, well-balanced, doing the right thing. Uh, you know, if you've ever done a draft in Football Manager, you'll see uh, it's not about going for the big names. You've got to get a balanced club, and they are going to really benefit from the business they did. PSG dropping down to second. Of course, they are going to bounce back with the money that they have. They'll sign the big players and bring them in. Um, they brought in Luka Modric eventually, Eden Hazard, Frankie de Jong, all joining the club, and they're spending money now as well. Still getting some players on a free, but Danilo Pereira being signed, Chesney being signed. Uh, the money, the checkbook is out, um, but no major surprises in some of the other uh, positions in Serie A, which is now fourth in the rankings. If we have a look at how they finished their season, 100 points for Atalanta. Not a big surprise, though. When we saw them with the players they signed, we did expect that to happen. Uh, Fiorentina getting relegated, but Atalanta did fantastic business um, the previous summer. And you can see all these big names that they brought in. They did also bring in the likes of Courtois, Canseo, Alaba. Sergio Regulion, uh, all coming in after their initial brilliant signings that they made. They have developed a fantastic squad and deserve to win that league. Napoli also brought in a lot of very balanced players, uh, not quite as many as Atalanta. And Juventus left behind in third place as a result of their business, which wasn't always fantastic. And you can see if we go to their transfer screen... They didn't make too many signings in their first season. That's what really hit them. Uh, but they are now starting to open the checkbook a little bit. Uh, a few players coming in. But it's still not brilliant from Juventus. So they could really struggle potentially. In the Bundesliga, if we have a look at how that one finished up, you can see Leipzig won the Bundesliga by one point over Bayern Munich. Uh, so Leipzig, obviously happy to spend money. Bringing in Usman Dembele on a free. 
Uh, but they brought in a few good players. I mean, it's not fantastic. You wouldn't expect that team to win the Bundesliga in normal times. But Bayern Munich did not do a great job. They did eventually start to bring quite a few players in. So we saw they brought Callum hudson Adoy in, Emre Chan joining them. And they're starting to bring a few players in now. They've signed Luis Suarez from AEK. Not the Luis Suarez, unfortunately. Edson Alvarez from Ajax. Trent Alexander-Arnold, of course, the big, big one. Um, but they're trying to make a comeback. Borussia Dortmund ended up finishing in fourth place. Um, and they're still signing people on free transfers now. But they didn't bring in many great names in the first transfer window is the issue. And then in the Premier League, the winners were Manchester United in the end. Winning it by seven points. Liverpool in fifth place. Newcastle getting relegated. Fulham and Wolves also going down. Uh, but no big surprises at the top really. You can see Arsenal finishing out in 8th, also not a massive surprise. Um, they do well to finish 8th this season. But they even spent £102 million when everybody was on free contracts, Manchester United. They just can't help themselves but spend money. Kevin Volland coming in from Dynamo Moscow. Uh, and then, more recently, a little bit of cash being spent. I'm surprised they won the title with that team. Chelsea, of course, have big wage budgets. Uh, and they did eventually start bringing people in. Maybe a little bit late and not necessarily the best quality. Man City did a big job. They're currently managed by Vincent Company as well. Uh, but they brought in some big names that are still trying to bring people in now. And Spurs, of course, now managed by Chris Powell. That's nice to see. Chris Powell deserves more work, in my opinion. Uh, and, yeah, some decent players coming in for Spurs as well. So the next one is, how did Barcelona get on uh, in La Liga? And you can see they actually finished down in fourth because they just brought nobody in. And Real Madrid, 36 wins, two draws, 110 points. Undefeated Champions with Cristiano Ronaldo back in as club captain. They were always going to do extremely well. They just went in big time for a lot of big players and still had time to bring in the likes of Sadio Mane. Uh, and then more recently, they brought in Danilo and Ngamelu from Young Boys. Um, but they brought in big, big names and they won the league absolutely storming it. Only conceded nine goals in 38 games. Atletico Madrid taking second place. Bernardo Silva's just joined them. They were bringing in players like nobody's business. Christian Pulisic in there. But we need to check on Barcelona, really. Uh, and if we have a quick look here, you can see they just didn't bring anybody in. I'm amazed they finished fourth. They've still not really brought anybody into the club. Absolutely crazy. Currently managed by Henrik Larsson. I'm loving the managers that they've been bringing in. Um, but that's not brilliant from Barcelona. They've really let that slip. Now, if we have a look at the Champions League and just maybe drop back a season and go to... Let's start off with the quarterfinals. Zenit St. Petersburg, Ajax, Atalanta and Man City all getting through. That's really nice to see. In the semi-final, Zenit and Ajax, the two teams to make it. And in the final, Zenit St. Petersburg, who of course had a solid squad and will have benefited by bringing in a lot of great players. Look at all these free signings that they picked up. Andre Silva, Marcus Alonso, that's a huge number. They absolutely flooded their team with decent players and they're still doing it now. Paolo Dybala just snapped up by Zenit St. Petersburg as champions of Europe. Uh, Kuchoviak currently, and Zuba, who you may remember from the World Cup, uh, as captain. He's managed, imagine Zuba lifting the Champions League for a Russian team. That is absolutely fairy tale stuff. And of course, Ajax, one of the strongest teams in the game anyway. Uh, then bringing in all these big, big players to strengthen them up. Delict, Ake, and Wijnaldum. Get the, the getting the Dutch collective together, uh, but unfortunately losing it in the final. But that's pretty nice to see. Uh, in the Europa League, if we just have a look at the quarterfinals here, Napoli, Benfica, Shakhtar, Lille. Uh, it's those teams who had decent squads together uh, as a result of not being gutted. And you can see there they've brought in decent players. Shakhtar, Benfica as well, I imagine, brought in quite a few uh, only brought in a couple actually. They've not done that much business. They've just got a decent squad to start with, Benfica. Um, but Napoli knocking out Bayern Munich as well. Uh, so really interesting the way some of those competitions have finished up. 
Uh, but we will leave it there for this experiment because these can go on forever. They're just really interesting, or I think they're really interesting. If you did enjoy this first part of this experiment, do drop a like down below. If you'd like to see a second part, definitely drop a like down below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. But until next time, see ya.